Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Dungeons & Dragons The Second Age. How are we all doing? Doing good. Yeah, pretty good. Excellent. So, before we get into our story, who wants to tell me precisely what it is that happened to you the last time we played? Well, we started off last time... Um... We, uh, we started off with the splitting into teams, didn't we? So we all had different tasks we had to do to make sure that this experiment by Professor Zale could go ahead. Uh, Elizabeth went off with Zale to uh, examine the experiment site and be taught a bunch of stuff related to her role in the... Um, fucking Claris and Aya went off to talk to uh, the Council of the Academy to try and persuade them that it was totally safe and that they'd be there watching over it all and to allow Professor Zale to go ahead. And Grim and Dathari went off to uh, try and learn more about mind shielding magics. Um, in doing so, it may have slightly aggravated uh, the abjuration woman, who turned out to be on the council that Claris had to... Claris, I had to... Uh, Way. Oh, we didn't aggravate her. Okay, maybe, maybe just, aggravate's a strong word. Like, she just had a strong position against the person that was telling her to help us. Yeah. She wasn't even necessarily against them, she was just incredibly irritated at the time. Yeah. So yeah, and then, um... But yeah. Claris and Aya successfully uh, persuaded the council to give them a go out. And so, uh, we carried on with preparations, and the next day, uh, we were ready to do our cool experiment. And we did the experiment, it worked out, and it, and, and it all totally worked out, and nothing wrong happened whatsoever. We attuned the fork, we turned it off, it turned off perfectly well, and, oh no, wait, sorry, it was completely self-sustaining, and we had to do a manual shot. And it was, uh, yeah, we got attacked by a shadow orb and some wraiths did but but we uh, successfully defeated the evil shadow or dislodged the crystal to form manual uh, shutdown and uh, that is where we left off uh, after having a little com a brief conversation and agreeing right let's go and uh, tell everyone what we need to do but we've successfully uh, complete the thing that we wanted out of this experiment which was we have a magical fork attuned to the shadow fell which will allow us to plane shift to the Cabal's teleportation circle. Indeed. Yes. Uh, so, as we resume uh, with you guys reviewing your experiences with the, um, uh, I guess the with the, the tuning fork safely secured. Um, what exactly do you want to do first? Well, I think, well, I think, yeah. First priority is to like spread, like inform them of the results of the experiment. Okay. Uh, we should probably let Zael do that because. Well, this is the, well, well, yeah. We'll let Zael do the talking, but like, it might be a good idea for us to still be there. Uh, well, like, I, I assume there's going to be some bureaucracy uh, happening before beforehand mm, possibly and I don't assume we're going to hear anything back from uh, from uh, oh, oh. Uh, wow the name of the guy uh, the person yeah, in the, charge the, the, dean. the dean the dean that's it he's he's technically not the guy in charge but yes well like he might might not technically be in charge, but like as far as importance, he might as well be. Yes, he he is the most senior member of the the academy's leadership. Hmm. Uh, but yes, you can feed back to them, but uh, that may not necessarily require all five of you. 
Uh, so is there anything else you wish to do at the same time? Uh, well, we pre I feel like we prepared everything uh, before we before we got here. Then okay. there was... I don't know if anybody else has anything they, they want to do. Uh, I have a question that I wanted to ask Arya that may lead to potentially doing research, depending on if Arya knows anything, but... Uh. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we, can, we can have a scene to represent that if you want. Sure. Uh, one second. How much time do we have before things... Well, technically, okay. technically, we are we have a, like an undetermined time limit, but we put our like we ha still have several days for like our our self set limit. Okay, which yeah. I guess we could like break, but um, yeah. Yeah, I think Lothari is interested in poking it around a little bit more. Okay. Uh, do you have any ideas where you want to start that, or do you just want to go back to uh, your contact whose name I, it evades me? Uh, uh, hmm. Uh, Alary. Right, I got, Alary. I got the. Um, what's Alary's? She Alary's just kind of like not a noble woman but just kind of like retired and just kind of like living that upper class life now right uh yeah she she comes from a like a, a essentially a highborn family so she is rich and retired ex-military so well respected okay um this doesn't have to be a scene but i think i would ask her if she'd be interested in in accompanying me to the government district to see if i can hunt down um yeah okay well letters you you have a scheduled dinner date anyway so yeah yeah uh you can you can ask her during that mm -hmm. um do you want to make me an investigation check to represent that uh Sure. Uh, actually, before you do that, give me a persuasion check first. Okay, that's because uh, <laughs> this better. hesitation is that that will real. determine whether Ilary offers you help or not for this role. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She is not. She's not. She's willing to come along with you, but she isn't willing to help you dig into the actual things yourself. Okay. So you'll have to. Do that yourself. All right. Does anybody else want to tag along? She, she yeah. definitely like mentioned that she's gonna go to the government district with a friend to look around. Well, guess it couldn't hurt. Uh, see if they have uh, like if there's some way to sign up the, or you know, promote the Amber Eagle. <laughs> All okay. right. Grim. <laughs> Grim will go along to to assist you. Uh, so yeah, between between the two of you, decide what you're gonna, who's gonna roll that, and who's gonna give help. And yeah, I guess Kalaria and Aris. Uh, what? Aya and Kalaris. <laughs> get that the right way around. Wow. Kalaria and Aris. Yep. <laughs> Those are some interesting <laughs> ship names. Yep. <laughs> Look, I've got a one track mind. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry, Laria is a good had... ship name. I'll, I'll be. Kalaria is a very good ship name. <laughs> Wait, look, we've already talked about this. To the, 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 words. <laughs> Try that again. The dynamic would work perfectly fine, but they'd also be like very chaotic. <laughs> yeah, Kalaria is the best bro TP. Anyway, <laughs> Kalaria. <laughs> It's, look, it's true. We've proven the bro TP there several times. It's true. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, basically just like whenever people seem to kind of have gone off to do their own thing, um, and Arya doesn't, if Arya doesn't seem to be like particularly busy or heading off to do something herself, uh, Clarissa just kind of like 
Uh, not really like wave her down or anything, but just kind of be like, Hey, Arya, I realize I don't actually know if you know anything about this, but I had something that I wanted to see if you had a bit more information about, perhaps. Oh? Do you know anything about the crossroads in the Feywild? I, I know it's in the Feywild, right, Ferris? Yes. Yeah. Do you know anything about the crossroads in the Feywild? Do I know anything about the crossroads in the Feywild? Do you want to give me a history check? Sure. Uh, I will say you can make it with advantage as you are a native. Okay. Wow. Um, well... <laughs> So you know a little bit about it. Um, it is essentially um, uh, so uh, the Feywild consists of a, basically like a bunch of um, uh, individual pockets of planar space. Um, so uh, as as you've experienced when you've travelled in the Feywild before, um, distance and time while travelling in the Feywild is a bit wonky, um, as it's essentially a bunch of pockets protected by powerful um, Fey magic. Yeah. Um, the crossroads is basically what holds all of those pockets together in the Feywild. Um, it is, save for the purposes of crossing, uh, generally off limits because of how um, how easy it is to become lost or to lose people in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's treated with the same sort of trepidation in the Feywild as perhaps a river with particularly strong undercurrents might be avoided by... A ranger in the material world mm -hmm. where it's safe to cross if you know the safe crossing points but if you step into it in the wrong place you could be snatched away and, and lost um right that's essentially all you know about it because uh you you were taught the safe crossing in and out points uh as a ranger but never really anything beyond that mm-hmm Okay, well, I'll just tell Clarice what I know. Okay. Hmm. Well, that... So there is a specific... There is... It is a specific place, and there is a way to get there in particular versus just... kind of passing through it, I guess? I'm not really quite sure exactly how the Feywild works, despite that explanation, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so so it, it it is essentially a a space, but it is a um uh, due to the way it's connected, it's incredibly sort of um once you get in it, there's no guarantee you're getting out of it the same way. Lovely. Yeah, I was like, I think I get that. I don't know if Kalaris quite grasps like the idea of that, just because the Fe she doesn't really remember. Actually, I don't even think she remembers anything from the last time she was in the Feywild, because I think that I didn't make that save that I had to make. Um, uh, the last time we were there, or it, it's like really foggy to her. Or it, yeah, it it probably is quite foggy. So like, Feywild is just like cool. We were there. We did some shit. Uh, it was weird, is what I remember, basically. Yeah, yeah you also only ever experienced a very small part of it. Yes. Um... Hmm. I mean, I guess it's not necessarily something right now, but I figured that since we're in the capital, we have more resources to figure things out besides me just asking you, but... I think that I need to go there someday, at least. And I wasn't really even sure how to get there, much less 
what sort of place it was, so I figured I'd at least ask you. Why do you want to know? I mean... That's where Tritharian is, at least as far as I understand. And at some point, I need to go and see him, I guess? That sounds really odd to say, but... These artifacts, and like, she kind of... Yeah, she has her sword in her because this is after the thing. She kind of like touches the, the, the hilt of the sword at the very least. Um... They're not, at least as far as he told, he's told me, they're not at their full power yet, but they won't be until they're reunited mm. with him, as I think the implication. But, like I said, it's probably not something immediate. It was just a thought that I had. Well, I'm not really sure how you would get to the Feywilds. I mean, you probably have to find... I guess I could take you. <laughs> but... I mean, if time permits and if you'd be willing, I wouldn't mind having somebody to help me not be lost, but... Yeah, <laughs> it's a tricky place if you're not used to it. I barely remember anything about the last time we were there, so... Just kind of like shrugs. <laughs> shrugs. It's kind of a dangerous proposition, are you? Is it? Yeah, well, th there is always the chance that you could get lost. Uh, mm. Time works very differently in the Feywild. It does. And so does memory, apparently. You you may be lucky enough to, you know, spend like days, days, maybe even weeks, maybe even months in there, and then come out and oh look, it's only been like two days. But you may also come out and it's been like two decades. Yeah. I mean, Kalaris's whole thing is like I think that's been discussed within the group before because that's also part of how um, people from. I want to say it was either from the capital or from the Feywild when we were back in Silverbrook way back when got to Silverbrook so quickly. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Simone Kolaris managed is... to make a journey that took should have taken a week in several days. Yeah, Clarissa's hope is that if she's able to get there, that at the very least Tritherian can help her get back. Um, but I don't know. She'll figure it out otherwise. Is her whole mindset on that? <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> As is the- well, look. <laughs> you know. Claris is a little confident, but also not, like, completely oblivious to dangers, but also is willing to believe that she can figure something out. <laughs> but regardless, it's probably not something we'll be able to take care of for a while since, well, everything else that's going on. Yeah. Thanks, though. That, uh... It's definitely more than I knew to start, so... Yeah, I would just be careful, it's... For a non-native trip to the Feywild. Even if Tritherion is there. It's still risky. I... Promise that when I go, I will be as prepared as I can be. And you and I are reckless, but we are most of the time not completely oblivious to danger, so. Mm-hmm. Despite what the others may choose to believe. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Hmm. 
Well, is there anything else that we need to take care of, or are we just waiting at this point? Uh, well, I think that's 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 up to you guys. There's we have a scene to resolve with uh, Lothari and Grim, but oh, sorry, that was like an actual question. To oh, you, sorry, from Kalaris to Arya. Sorry, I yeah. Oh. <laughs> That, that was that was either an out for us to just kind of fuck off and do something off screen, or like if Arya has something to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything to do. to do. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I need Lothari or Grim to give me a dice roll. Uh, what are we rolling? A investigation. Do we want to do this the same way that we did before, where I help you? Uh, I guess we might as well. Right. Probably a good idea. So, what are you looking for? I'm looking for the um, unredacted versions of the documents that we found in the reference library. Okay. Well, okay. pretty good. Damn. Um. Uh, okay. Scroll back in my notes. I can do paperwork. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay, so Grim. Uh, yes. At Lothari's behest, you look for a copy of the uh, uh, the marriage certificate with uh, the reference number that you're given. Um, and as you pull it from the uh, the stacks in this in the uh, government records. Uh, yeah, you find this marriage certificate uh, between uh, Urson Hylas and Vasi Lolf. Hmm. Urson Hylas and Vasi Lolf. Dun, dun, dun. Um, hmm. Urson wasn't the counselor, dude, right? No, uh, Kadogan was, was the was the okay. uh, yeah. Uh, if this if this marriage certificate has anything to go by, uh, Urson Hylas is dead mm, hundreds of years ago. Okay, okay. Hmm. Uh, because, it, well, for, for starters, this is uh, pre the secession of the Dark Elves. Yeah, okay. Um, so whatever connection, familial connection that, that um, uh, Urson has to the, to the government dude here, uh, it's like very distant. Yes, he he is a great great grandparent of uh well no actually uh it would be a great 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 uncle because he's mm -hmm. yeah different different branch of the family. And is he the only living member of the Hylas family? Uh with a 25 on your investigation check um uh, with a 25 on an investigation check, uh, uh, Kadogan Hylas is uh, the only living member of the Hylas family, never married. But he does have an adoptive daughter. Oh, shit. Okay. Wait, so... Uh, so why are you looking for uh, Fordham exactly? I think these people have some connection to the smuggling, the weapon smuggling that's been happening. Oh, yeah, of course. Hmm. The name has popped up. I guess that makes sense. Well, I guess we must uh, keep on keep on searching then. What was the adoptive daughter's name? Uh, 
So... Uh, so, the name on the adoptive uh, certificate is, uh, is Ali, or Ali Kren, uh, who is a, uh, according to Any this... In relation to Harley Quinn. <laughs> no, not quite. Damn. Uh, spelled Ali Kren. Does, does she occasionally dress up like a Harlequin and run around with a baseball bat smacking people? Mm, not to your knowledge. No, we we already have one at a party. That's true. Um, wow. uh, but uh, with a twenty-five on investigation, uh, I went uh, attached to the uh, adoptive certificate of uh, Ali Kren is a, uh, a note to another document uh, where Ali Kren legally changed her name. To Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> to Yasnira Hylas. Yes, there it is. Okay. But that's the okay. name we saw selling. Yeah. Yep. Da, da, da. Hmm. Well. If we're, uh... Perhaps we should pay this Kadogan Hylas a visit and ask about his daughter's uh, career track. Yeah, that might might lead us, uh, or he might be able to point us in the right direction. Although, considering how well, I assume they were close to some degree, so just hope that he doesn't decide to cover up for her. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Well, even that should tell us something. Uh, yeah, it should. Well, in that case, let's um, let's head out. Can't be too far. Uh, yeah, I mean, if um, uh, oh, what's her name? Um, if Aliri's with us and just not helping out, just like kind of like going on a walk with us, I would ask her. It's just like, do you know if there's any way to meet with this Kodogan Hylas? Uh, yeah, she, she sort of like as as you're walking out, sort of turns turns to look at you and says, "Um, well, he's not exactly uh, commonly sociable. He visits certain certain of the more um, prestigious events." Uh, that are hosted every now and again um, but when he's not at one of those things he tends to sequester himself away in, in his home um, I believe he still does some work for the uh, uh, the government departments but I think he is close to being almost fully retired at this point okay Why? What were you thinking? It'd be nice to ask him a few questions, that's all. Her face, like, sort of, like, gets a little bit serious, and she sort of says, <laughs> um, Athari, I... As much as I've entertained this interest of yours, Governor Hyas is very... very li well-liked and very well-respected man. I'm not sure people would appreciate poking around in his history. Well, this has less to do with history now and more with the present. I'm unsure what you mean. We think that his daughter may be uh, involved in um, some more... Uh, some untoward business. I didn't know he had a daughter. Uh, adoptive, according to the records. She looks genuinely confused. 
I've never seen... He's never spoken about it. Suspicious. Hmm. Well, all the more reason to get a couple of questions answered. Just be careful what questions you ask. Of course. Uh, so, do you just want to go with the two of you, or do you want to bring other people? Uh, oh. Here's the real question. Do we want to go and talk to him, or do we want to go and break into his house? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think that's Lefari thinking there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Lefari would ask that. Well... We would definitely start by, like, considering he's a well-respected man, uh, and generally considered to be, well, by the sounds of it, a good person, we might as well try to civilize the approach, and we should perhaps stick to that for now. Sounds alright to me. It's, uh, yeah. Because, they get... Like he might, he might have, uh, well, he might be a little bit more forthcoming than we expect, or not, because considering he kept his daughter relatively secret. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's worth bringing in the rest of the group into this? They've got stuff to take care of. There's no reason to bother them. It's a simple, you know, simple visit. Yeah, how, uh, yeah. like how hard could it be, right? <laughs> We've done it before. Exactly. Alright, let's go. Okay. So, you are just going to Kedogan Hylas's house? house. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just uh, walk up, ask uh, some uh, invasive questions. After a little bit of convincing, Ari agrees to tell you where he lives. Mm-hmm. Um, you... Well, Thurry makes it very clear that she does not expect Ilyari to uh, involve herself any more than that. <laughs> yes, she absolutely refuses to take it any further than that. Um, and, yeah, I guess you arrive at a um, very Suspiciously wide... Suspiciously creepy? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> a a wide, <laughs> wide-fronted um, clad in the the whitish marble that most of the city of Argentella end is. Um, you walk up to this front to the uh, the front gate uh, where a couple of the city guards sort of stand um, at a post just outside. Um, as the two of you arrive, they sort of step out in front of you and says, um, "Morning, folks. How can we be of service?" You said two guards, right? Uh, yeah, two city watch. City watch, okay. Luthari like looks um, to Grim to see if he wants to take the lead on this, or if she should. Because this is out, wait, just to be, it is out just outside of the the building, right? So, or is there like, or was there like a fence still? Uh, well, so uh, visualize this. There's this uh, manor house with a small garden. Uh, with a gate at the front, and there's two guys ah, okay. standing either side of the gate. It's like a, a small cottage path leading up to this thing. Um, well, uh, we were hoping to uh, uh, uh I, I am just blanking on all the names now. Uh, you just said it like two seconds ago. <laughs> Kadogan Hylas. Yes, Kadogan. You need simpler names, just Steve and Tom. No, that's not that's not fancy enough. <laughs> no, okay, it's fine. Um, we, uh, if possible, we'd like to meet with, or at least speak to you know, Ken Hylas. Um, there is 
uh, there's not a real strong sense of urgency, but if uh, he were to be available, that would uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Give me a persuasion check. Why did you make me roll? No. Okay, this is fine. I can talk. Help anyway here. I can talk. See? Oh god, <laughs> Okay. I can use words. Oh. I didn't threaten anyone. Um, <laughs> power. So, uh, the, the two guys sort of say, um, well, Governor Hylas has a very busy schedule and generally asks not to be disturbed. Um, there are official channels you can go through to make an appointment with him. I think that might be the best way if you want to talk to him about a non-urgent matter. Well, I didn't say there was no sense of urgency. <laughs> uh, I said, like, it depends. Like, how, like, would you happen to know how long such channels take? Because we can't afford weeks. Like, well, weeks, then we're starting to get them. Yeah, pro problems are going to arise. If you can tell me the nature of your business, I might be able to give you a better idea. Um. It would involve his. Uh, it would involve his private life. Uh, it's so about someone very close to him. Yeah, I, we were told that that it's it is a private matter that the it would not be. Uh, it would not be in anyone's uh, interest to discuss it <laughs> further. Like yeah, it, would, it might okay. be considered rude. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give you a choice here as to whether you roll <laughs> intimidation or deception. <laughs> God, I mean, why I think is... Lothari, Lothari is implying that it's it has to do with with his family history specifically. <laughs> it's just like, it, like just sound, make everything sound awful. <laughs> well, yeah, like, yeah. like he's yeah. trying to say like it's a per like it's. You know, we that we wouldn't want to like embarrass him, but like it might be yeah, personal yeah. to him. You're it. sounding like you're threatening him. <laughs> no, it was specifically the bit that it was like any any longer than a couple of weeks, and then there's gonna be problems. And I was like, <laughs> why would you say it like that? Well, like I, I didn't say there's going to be pro there might be problems. <laughs> you know, it's not any better. It doesn't make it better. So. Yeah, if, for purposes of determining the consequences, do you think this is intimidation or deception? Are you trying to bluff, or are you trying to... It's not even a bluff, but I guess it's closer to a bluff than to intimidation. Well, it's yeah. it's more explicitly that you're not saying... You're, you're trying to get them to convince... You're trying to convince them that it's important without stating why it's yes. important. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, could I... Could... I say what Lothari, Lothari kind of backing him up on that is her helping, or do I need to be a little? Yeah, we, we, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you help for the sake of that. We should really, let, you should, we should really just let you roll in the future, but it's too late. Mm, mm. Or is you, are you even <laughs> you worse? Negative. I have a zero. Okay. Yeah, wow, I'm better at talking. Negative though. No, I, I have, I have a plus. So what? Yeah, what are you, what are you gonna roll? Well, oh, see, I'm actually good at intimidation, but I don't think that's on purpose. Uh, so is that meant to be intimidation, not persuasion? No, no, this is uh, persuasion. Cause, or well, deception. Your, your, your option was deception, or... Oh, well, yeah. deception is the same as, as persuasion, so... So which, which you, you want to do deception? Yes. Okay. I don't want to leave behind a bad impression. So... If possible. The the guard at the gate, sort of, as, when you mention a personal matter, he sort of looks a little awkward. Turns to his, uh, to his associate, who also just sort of looks at him awkwardly and sort of says, "I'll go and see if the governor is available." Okay. Sort of disappears off up the the path. Uh, emerges a few moments later and says the governor will make some time. Oh, what are your names, well, please? Uh, oh. Quagrim the Maris and 
Mathari. Kalistrate. Sort of leads you up. Uh, you are taken through the front door through a... Uh, compared to the outside, fairly modest hallway. Um, and into a sitting room uh, that appears to be... Uh, in somewhat a state of somewhat infrequent use, um, you are offered the opportunity to sit, and uh, after a few moments, uh, a, uh, a very worn-looking uh, elderly elf who still holds himself with a great uh, deal of posture um, enters the room. Uh, and uh, yeah, it regards you with a uh, like a piercing look, and sort of says, "So, what is this about?" Uh, is there anyone else in the room? Uh, he no, he probably would have dismissed the the guards okay. to they're they're outside, but um, well, um, uh, this is about your uh. Adopted daughter. Both of you give me an insight check. Oh, no. Okay, I'm better at those. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's oh, not no. a negative no, number. You're not. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, <laughs> thanks to a genuinely terrible role on his part, oh. uh, Grim, you notice nothing. Um, Lothari, your um, you're used to dealing with um, well, it, in in your time as a uh, high-ranking military official, you've dealt with a lot of stiff upper lip um, authority types. Mm -hmm. um, his demeanor does not crack, uh, but his eyes tell you that something is immediately wrong. Hmm. But I don't get anything more than that. Uh, you don't get anything more than that, no. Um, but he, he sort of like... He, his demeanor doesn't crack and, so, and he sort of says, I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. Well... Like, the re records indicate... Uh, well, like, we, we don't want to... Uh, we decided to, you know, keep it uh, try to keep as few people and uh, like tell as few people as possible out of respect for well you and obviously in this community you're, you're like people speak highly of you um, and we all respect the work that the government does but like according to the the papers uh, you had you adopted uh, a a daughter at some point, which uh, was a, who later underwent uh, underwent a name change and took the name Hylas. Yes, you you wouldn't happen to know anything more about her. Uh, he, I, I, one, once again, his demeanor is just sort of, it's this, uh, uh, straight line, sort of like, he, he's in a, in a position, he, f uh, how, how best to explain this to people who haven't passed the uh, insert check. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. His demeanor just doesn't change. Okay. Um. And he basically says, I'm not sure where you've got your evidence from, but I have no adoptive daughter. There is no relationship that I'm aware of that would fit that mm. description. And you wouldn't happen to know anyone by the name of Ali Cran 
and Lothari is just like, kind of takes a step forward and like looks at him very pointedly when she says that. Uh, okay, make me uh, another insight check. Uh. <laughs> um. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh. Wow, okay. It's better. Oh, god. oh my god, okay. We're going up. Um. So, like... Uh, as, as you say that, like, pointedly and take a step forward, um, like, he actively flinches. Um, so you do know her. Uh, his uh, stiff upper lip Domino quickly turns into a scowl and sort of says, um... Uh, look, I don't know who you are or what you want, but you won't be intimidating anything out of me. We're not trying to intimidate you. No. We, yeah, appreci we understand how family is a complicated issue for you. So... <laughs> I think everyone in this room would agree that it's in all of in all of our best interests if um, word of this doesn't leave this room. Yeah, there's no reason for it to ever leave. Not at the moment. What do you want? I just want to know where she is. Then you're out of luck. I don't know. Then why keep her a secret? Why do you think? Probably for similar reasons that we're trying to find her. How are... Guessing it. I made a mistake of mercy. That's my. That's the only thing that I've done. Well. What led you to be in that position in the first place? Why take her in at all? Give me a persuasion check. Hey. Okay. No. <laughs> nice. Natural nineteen. Very good. Okay. Uh, so uh, the governor, for the first time, sort of like uh, relaxes his shoulder, like glances over back towards the door, and sort of says, "Um, look." About 40 years ago, Ali came to me. Some vagabond girl claimed to be able to trace her lineage all the way back to my family for generations. First I laughed at it, and then she was able to name pretty much all of my ancestors off the tip of her tongue. She told me everything that had happened in the time between her and my family's passing ways, and how she managed to escape from that world, and I took pity on her. Turns out I was a fool. She never got out of that life at all. She's been using my name and reputation ever since to further her own goals. Does that satisfy you? Hmm. Ooh. Can I tell Ooh. if he's lying at all? Uh, give me an insight check. Or hiding something or anything. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so... He's not lying to you. Okay. Um, 
he's like he's clearly giving you the abridged picture of the story. But yeah, but he's not like deliberately trying to hide something. No, he he's not misinforming you. Like it genuinely seems like this woman is a part of his family turned up and used that sob story to con him. Mm -hmm. uh, which obviously that makes sense why he's ashamed of it. You wouldn't happen to have any of her belongings still. Sort of looks at you quizzically. <laughs> Anything would do. He I think he he pauses for a moment and then goes over to a dresser goes through the drawers and pulls out a uh like a like a, a thin wooden box um uh flips up the clasp and uh pulls out a like a silver chain uh sorry I should say silvered chain um that he sort of holds out towards you and sort of says this was something I bought her to commemorate the occasion. I don't know if that counts. What do you It'll want have it to for? Do. It would help us in tracking her down. Why do you want to find her? Well, it seems like her business is interfering is not interfering what what, what did I say hmm. well her business has become our business and we intend to put a stop to it he withdraws the hand and sort of says don't worry oh Sorry, well, I guess yeah, no, ca 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 carry on, because he, he, he pauses and gives you time. So, like, we do not intend to, to like, harm her in any meaningful way, just... Any meaningful way. <laughs> <laughs> we, just want, we just want to catch her, and, uh, well, we're most likely she's going to end up in jail. Um, or, well, that's what we're going to be trying to achieve, at least. Yes, we cannot make any promises, but you should know that what she's doing has the potential to bring harm to many, many people across the land, and we will do everything that we can to put a stop to it. Um, and if you wish, we will not... We will try our best to bring no harm to her, specifically. One of you give me a persuasion check with advantage. Go for it, Grim. <laughs> <laughs> See, someone who appreciates Grim's skills. Uh, persuasion. Oh. oh. Well, oh, oh. Okay. Good I had advantage. It's not Grim's skills, I doubt. It's minis. Wow. Wow. On the bright side, you had advantage on that one. Yep, that's very yep. bright. It's, uh... <laughs> It's a nat one instead, or would have been a nat one. He he looks down at you, Grim, and sort of says, "I know who you are. I know what you've done." And I think. Based on that, I should give you the benefit of the doubt. And he sort of reluctantly holds out the chain towards you. Says, I'll take it. As much as I feel like a fool for 
falling for her lies doesn't stop her being family. I guess... I guess we should... Uh, well, out of respect for you, then, is there any requests that you have beyond, well, the obvious try not to uh, hurt her? I suppose there is one. Don't bring her back here. I, I, I kind of had a hunch. Um, but sh we should be able to, uh, to make sure she, uh, she stays somewhere else. Probably outside of the Elven Kingdom altogether. I've spent my life trying to do the right thing. And somehow I feel like people knowing about how she tricked me would not be conducive to my cause. We understand. Well, you are, um, you're in you're already putting a lot of trust into us, so... And... I think you may have earned enough respect by now to... for people to, uh... Well, ignore it to, to some degree, but we... that is... that is for you to decide. Um, we won't... well, make that decision for you. Um... Yes, we will. Uh, I guess in that case, we won't be. Uh, well, we won't use up any more of your time, and hopefully, we'll meet under better circumstances. Well, or or not at all, or not at all. Hmm. He sort of contemplates that for a moment and sort of says, "I feel like." Not at all is a bit optimistic, but we'll do our best to make sure you never have to see us again. <laughs> well, like you know, it's not like we have. It's not like we hate each other, but like, but regardless, we'll. Uh, this is this is all just speculation, anyway, uh, as to if and when we'll see each other, but. Um, Oh, I guess that does leave uh, one question that we didn't answer. Would you like to know if she's been captured? Because we can easily send word. Uh... Uh, or would you just like it? Or don't you want to be reminded of it at all? Uh, he pauses for quite some time. Uh, and it take it takes him like it seems to be a struggle for him to just sort of say, "I would like to know." Okay. I'll be I will be sure to inform you in a, a discreet manner. But it might take some time, so don't expect anything soon. He nods. We do appreciate everything that you've said today. Well, I guess we best get going. Mm -hmm. have, a, have a nice day. He doesn't respond to that statement. Lothari <laughs> uh, well, well, gives a short bow and uh, it kind of turns to Grim and just like shrugs. 
well, it all just like you know, kind of gesture with my head to the the exits. Yeah, yeah. The, the the two of you walk out of the room. Uh, the two guards are sort of like standing outside in the hallway, like in directly opposite the door. Um, they sort of uh, they, they look at you and sort of say, "Is everything all right?" Well. Uh, he, he might need a minute to fully process everything, but uh... just say he's fine and m leave. Like, <laughs> but he'll, but he'll... We're, we're finished. We're we we've had our discussion. Thank you again for letting us in. Why do we let Grim talk? <laughs> what one one of the guards like stands by your side as the other one like looks into the room to make sure that, like he's not dead on the floor. Yeah, because that's like the most ominous thing. It's like don't go in there for a bit. Why are we no, going no. in there for a minute? It's, <laughs> it's just I just, wording. Look, I, it's just being honest. Like, like he need, he might need a minute just to like you know get his thoughts in order. That's exactly what's happening. Yep. No lies, no obfuscation. It's yeah. You know. the, the the guy peers in, like sees that that the governor is all right. Sort of turns to look at his comrade, nods at his comrade, and his comrade leads you out of the house. Hmm. Yeah. Once we get out, Talithari kind of like uh, holds the chain up from one finger and says um i know elizabeth is a skilled abjurer but you don't suppose she has any talent for divination well, we we've um we've looked for people and and items before so i assume i assume someone uh should be able to do it if i recall correctly the one of uh, Clarice's uh, artifacts has some uh, capabilities along those lines. You also know However, that Vondal has the ability. Oh, yes. However, if uh, the main restriction that we seem to run into is its rather limited um, range. Oh, internet. Sorry, my internet just died. You might oh, need to repeat that. I said, um... I think yes, like I think like a few of us can uh, like have those capabilities. However, one of the most limiting factors is range. We might be able to use it in a city to find someone, but like out like out in the wild or anything beyond, or yeah, it's it's basically just a needle in a haystack. All right. Well, that's better than nothing, I suppose. Well, if we get close, at least we'll be able to pin, uh, you know, pinpoint your location. Okay. Uh, Lothari, as you're, like, running the chain through your fingers, as a skilled metal worker, you realize that this is not, uh, silver. It is, in fact, mithril. Oh. Oh, shit. It's a slightly bigger deal. Dang. It, it, but it's just like a simple silver chain necklace. Or yes. mithril chain necklace. It, it, it is a okay. chain necklace made out of mithril. It is a rich person's jewelry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That is, yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay. So eventually you reunite with your companions who have finished doing various debriefs with uh, Professor Zale and his crew. Yay. Mm -hmm. uh, probably by this point, it's getting towards the evening. Uh, do you guys want to do anything else? I'm good. I don't have to break into that guy's house and steal this necklace. <laughs> Great. Uh, Excellent. The success of the See, day. That was one of the reasons why it's like, maybe I shouldn't join, uh, join Lafari, because like, then I might be like implicated. <laughs> but, uh... No, okay. <laughs> to be fair, if but we I didn't get that necklace really... from that persuasion check, Lafari would have snuck out on her own and yeah. stole it in the middle of the night. 
also, but like Grim doesn't know about Lafari's uh, excursions. I think he's one of the only party members at this point. Oh no, I have no idea either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ignorance is bliss, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in that case, I guess you guys <laughs> feeling some of you feeling a little sore from your combat earlier. Um, decide oh, yeah. to have a rest. You take a long rest, uh, and uh, yeah, with that, the the next day dawns, um, and I take it that means that you guys are pretty much ready in terms of preparation. It just depends if you want when you want to go, and if you want to do anything before you go. I guess, considering how far we are ahead on schedule, do we want to just give give ourselves one day of nothing? Not that we have to like act through it, but... Uh... I mean, having one day in between wouldn't be the worst thing, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think Lotharia would double-check that, like, just, like, make sure that Grim is, like, like say, like, it's like, yo, Grim, should I? Are you? Am I coming along with this one? Oh, I, like, uh, like, well, like I said before, you, like, you, like, you, you can join whenever, whenever you want. You're always welcome. Uh, well, I do have this other business to attend to, but if uh, I'd be willing to help you out with this, if you're willing to help me out with that, that well, seems like a fair trade. Although I will admit we probably have to go for the other thing anyway, but <laughs> uh, well, I guess you know we might get to celebrate both things then. Mm. <laughs> oh, um. Uh... Um, can I, I? I do need to do some a bit of shopping. I just realized because I wasn't here for the downtime. Oh. Uh, ah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What do you need? Uh, I need to pay a visit to any sort of uh. Um. Mm. How long would it take me to make like a simple, like something about the size of an arrowhead? Maybe a little bit bigger. No, yeah, much bigger than this arrowhead. It depends what you want to make it out of. Hmm. Probably just some, like... Um... Oh, God. What what are metals? <laughs> Hold on, I need a. It doesn't need to necessarily like know the specifics of it now. I just need to know how yeah. sort of rare it's going to be. Um, I I I think I want something that I could do in like a couple of days max. I think I'll do something fancier later if we have time. But for now, can you melt down the necklace into mithril arrows? <laughs> no. <laughs> That would be horrible. It no. kind of defeat the purpose of getting. <laughs> it, yeah, it would also defeat the point of getting the necklace. Um, yeah. So, uh, considering you had some days of not being here, to sort of where you you were NPC'd, I will say you can have you can have put the plans in place to try and make something if you want to make something. And if you're taking a day to have downtime, then you can probably make it. Okay. Yeah. Uh... I basically want to make the, um, basically want to make her new Kensei weapon, <laughs> just so I can have one. Oh yes, you, what what did you want again? Uh, the hook short spear. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll say you can you can put the preparations in to make that. Mm -hmm. Uh, how much would materials for that cost? Uh. Probably not a huge amount because I think, as far as the DMG is concerned, it's just a spear. Um, 
Spears are cheap. Why? What are you making? Kensei weapons. Because you you can't just buy Kensei weapons. You have to make yeah. them, but they're functionally the same as regular weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Let me find out the cost of a spear. <laughs> Uh, it'll cost you about a gold. All right. Uh, oh wait, no. Technically, it's a martial weapon. So yeah. Uh, what's the equivalent martial weapon? Is there one? Uh. Well, I would, uh, something like a pike. Uh, five gold. Okay. I mean, we never uh, gave you any gold for the dragon. Oh. Yeah, a, a, a pike has basically the same as the uh, hooked short spear. Alright, but yeah, in that case, uh, yeah, I'll. Well, sorry, I mean, if you have a lot of money, but she has five gold. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so yeah, the the your day of downtime goes by. Does anybody else want to do anything? Um, I can't think of anything specific other than just take advantage of the fact that I'm in a city with a magical academy in it. Okay. Yeah, you spend some time uh, reading books as you always do. Yeah. Yeah, reading books and trying to learn more about magic. And also trying to find elven history books. Okay. Yeah. So. Because I want to make notes. Because she's probably actually whipping out her own history book and making notes on the elven perspective of various historical events. Okay. Especially that big old war that elves and humans had. Because she's probably got a lot of the human perspective on that, and not a lot of the elven perspective. Which one? All of them. <laughs> no. There were multiple. Yeah. Starting with the most recent ones, but yeah, trying to get all of them. Okay, so uh, if nobody has anything else specific that they uh, want to do, uh, no, never mind. I was like thinking of seeing if uh, maybe we can get some, like I was thinking about maybe some poisons or something. But then I was like, no, we're like, up against all undead, and it might be illegal, and we get in trouble. And it's yeah. Okay. Oh, actually, there's one thing I'd like to buy. I would like to see if I could find some keltrops, like uh, some bags. I feel like we're gonna need to make an escape, and uh, a bag of twenty caltrops is a gold. Yes, I'll I'll get like three, four bags. Well, I'll get I'll get five bags. Why not? Okay, five bags of caltrops. You have one hundred caltrops. That's a lot of caltrops. <laughs> that is a lot of caltrops. But like, I ha I have them in five indi individual pouches, so I can easily, you know, yep. ration them. I don't think that was the the oh, thing that well. we were commenting on. I think that was just the fact that 100 caltrops is a decent amount of caltrops. It's 10 pounds of caltrops. Can Grim yeah. hold the same on his own? That's what he has I'm the bag of holding like, for. Like, no, this I'm, is true. I'm just like imagining like a garbage bag sized sack filled with caltrops just being dragged behind Grim now. Yeah. But no, most of them will just be going into the bag of holding. That's pretty much it. Okay. We uh, here's a question: Do we want to get stuff like holy water <laughs> or something? Hey, for vampires, I don't know. Oh yeah, we. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Well, actually... Yeah, let's go yeah. buy some garlic. <laughs> wow. Um... Yeah, we can... Oh, right, we determined that buying holy water was about as uh, costly as just... Being it it is right? exactly the same. Yeah, great, yep. cool. Well, if you want home-blessed uh, holy water, we can make that happen, or we can just go buy some from somewhere, I guess. Homemade, homemade holy water. Look, I'm just saying. 
Uh, yeah, again, 25 gold per flask of holy water. Um, how many do we want? I guess not too, too many. One each. We still have yeah. a couple left somewhere, I think, right? I, I think we it? we left those, like, we looked for those, and I can't uh, remember what, what we did with those. I do have... I do have the silver powder Nessus. Wait, it's silver powder, right? For holy water. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um. So I have enough to make two if we want to just have two. Um. If we want more than that, we'll have to. Uh, you know, how about we we make two and then we just buy three. So we have one each, except for Kalaris, because Kalaris is a source of holiness. <laughs> I I just radiate well, radiant energy, so you know it's fine. You Basically, are the holy. I guess no. I'll just subtract seventy five gold. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'll take the silver powder out of my uh inventory, and y'all distribute it. I guess if one one each. Then yes. One each. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, cool. With all of your shopping preparations completed, uh, Lothari comes back at the end of the day with a very strange-looking new weapon. Uh, and, yeah, I guess, unless you want to do anything else next day, go. I'll going in. Rough to our doom. Yeah. Yeah. Also, for the record, I imagine Lothari keeps her new weapon just in her hip quiver with her three arrows. Oh, my God. Oh. Could work. But yeah, should we? Um... Does that mean we're going in? Uh, pretty much. Not going right. to tell them you're coming. <laughs> No, I no DM was, interference. I thought the whole point was we're not going to tell them we're coming. No, no, we are going to. We're going to act as if we're just meeting them regularly, and then find a good opportunity. Uh... Like, we might as well like milk our, this opportunity as much as we can. Well, then I guess I will use sending. I'm guessing I can sending the Supreme Witch. Uh, you can, because you know her. Cool. I will set, cast sending to try and contact the Supreme Witch and hope that the 5% chance of failure for going across into a different plane doesn't apply. <laughs> okay. Uh... And I will just say, and I will, yeah, I'll just say to her, like, we're going to be coming today. Okay. Yeah, but it'll just be a simple message of we're going to be, we've attained, like, we'll be like, we've attained the means, we'll be seeing you today. Okay. Something like that. Hmm. And then, uh, yeah, you... uh, after a few moments, a message in the Supreme Witch's voice comes back and says, Excellent, I'll be prepared to receive you within the hour. Cool. Let's wait another oh. hour. Yeah, let's Please. wait another hour and then we'll all join hands. Okay. Um, also, we should probably be armored up. Uh... Yeah, obviously. Okay, you gear up. Everything yeah. ready. And then, with the power of friendship and magic, We'll teleport to the Shadowfell. Okay. The okay. Circle of the Supreme Witch. Just making sure that all of my uh, spells are <laughs> correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do well, spells every, I keep, keep double checking all of Lothari's stuff, and then I'm just like, wait, no, this is all just everything that she already has. Yeah. It's like, is this all of the stuff I want to have? Reading all of your smite slots. Yeah. <laughs> I've, okay. I've already fair, cast mage have... armor. I have a couple of other things that I have up my sleep. Thank you very much. What, like the oh, the the healing aura has been used a lot. Yeah. True. It's, like, uh, I, I will I will nice. point out I've already cast mage armor as okay. part of the everyone else getting ready. Like I'll cast it and then do the teleport, so it's still got the full oh. eight hours. This yeah, they broke my music again. This is fine. <laughs> Does mage armor help me at all? Um. Well, as long as you're not wearing, yeah, it's just anyone who isn't wearing armor, so it technically would. Um, well, it depends. Is do you get you more than three bonuses? Well, because you, it is well, no, major armor. The target's is... base AC becomes thirteen plus its Dex mod. Yeah, instead of the monk version. Yes. Hold on, let me check. Yeah, but the monk version is just you also add. 
Uh, yeah, but I think I think that's also considered base AC. On, let me try. Yeah, so it's it's like ten plus wisdom and dex, or thirteen plus dex. It says my a it doesn't say base AC. It says AC, but I imagine well, it's the same thing. Well, yeah. If it says AC is dex plus wisdom, then this is my AC equals ten plus dex plus wiz. Yeah. So is your yeah. wisdom greater than three, or equal to you? It's four. So. Oh, uh, so you 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 don't have gain gain any benefit. Ah, oh, that's bullshit. It should totally give you benefit. <laughs> well, it's in order. It's so that you don't break the game with a. Like you know, twenty something AC monk. I, I failed to see the problem. <laughs> Which you can do at later levels anyway. <laughs> but yes, I'm, but like... at, I'm at twenty AC. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, Surely we should could be consulting the dungeon master on whether it would have an effect. Fuck is this one? Okay, uh, this track will have to do because the Roll20 updating broke my music playlists again. Uh, Rip. But it's fine. Uh, so, you all feel the familiar lurching sensation from behind your navel, and uh, you find yourselves uh, transported into a, uh, a windowed room. Uh, almost like a, a conservatory at the top of a, of a structure. Uh, and as you look out, there is a storm-wracked, uh, darkened sky uh, that some of you have seen before. Uh, it is uh, grey, and the, Im the uh, limited ambient light is sickly. Uh, the majority of the room is lit by a series of sconces on the walls as the light filtering through the, the glass creates like a, a dirty uh, ambience. Uh, you are unmistakably in the Shadowfell. And as you arrive, you are greeted by a number of faces. Oh, some people didn't sort their health bars out after a long rest. Oh, yeah, that, that'd be me. Uh, Every time I see Lyra's token, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, I, I know at this point, but it's just a lot. Okay, Ward, give me that juicy second health bar. Okay, uh, so as you bamf into the magic circle, um. Uh, Elizabeth and Grimm, you've both seen this room before, uh, except it looks slightly different. The chair that is normally directly opposite the circle uh, is no longer there. It looks like it has been removed from the room. Um, instead, standing directly opposite you are three figures uh, that you have seen before. Uh, Lysidius Aranda is standing there in his full set of like uh, winged regalia plate mail. Um, uh, where strapped across his back is a, uh, a massive greatsword. Uh, standing just behind him is the uh, hooded and cloaked form of Illyria Zaranda, um, who uh, is sort of um, has her arms folded, but is it um, uh, keeping a careful eye on the rest of the room. Uh, and then standing at the back is a uh, the uh, tan skin uh, flax and hair form of uh, that some of you have only encountered once, but some of you have encountered many times. Uh, the Supreme Witch. Um, as you take in the room, uh, the Supreme Witch says, "You finally arrived, and at such an opportune timing. Uh, first of all." Let us get the formalities out of the way. Um, and at this point, uh, a fourth figure who was leaning up against one of the bookshelves moves and draws your attention. Um, 
a figure in a heavy, corroded-looking set of plate mail. Mm. Um, like, pulls himself up to his full height. Uh, which, standing up full height, is about seven feet tall. Oh, fuck. Um, out of a pair of vision slits either side of a the, the centerpiece of his helmet... Um, uh, a single glowing eye is visible uh, underneath the left-hand side of his helmet. Oh my god, it sounds. <laughs> Not quite. But damn it. It's the right eye and everything. <laughs> I'm so upset. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, the Supreme Witch uh, gestures to the figure in armor and says, uh, This is Zune. Seneschal of the Evernight. Here's the law here, and will be acting as your advocate. Oh, greetings to... Zoon. Zoon, okay, Zoon. Give him a nod. Okay. He uh, inclines his head back at you. Uh, uh, takes a step forward and says, Whilst I am here... You do not need to, fe need to fear the city's residents. Disrespect me, however, and that privilege ends. You will become fair game, as are all mortals. Um, at this point, he turns back to the Supreme Witch, and he says, And I'll take this moment to remind you, Valoel, that this same warning extends to you and your organization. Violate our code, and your privileges will be revoked as well. Uh, everybody give me an insight check. Huh. Can't believe it's the grim ember eagle. Or like basically the anti ember eagle. Damn it. Come on. Sweet. Oh, okay. Claris, uh Lethari and Grim. No, no advantage. Oh, no advantage, okay. Yeah, that's I, a I, That was... Uh, okay, so, uh, Kalaris and Lafari then. Uh, when Zoon refers to uh, Valuel, the Supreme Witch grimaces momentarily. Can you spell that, please? Okay. I mean, Elizabeth's also gonna, like look at Zoon and say, so, I'm assuming the obviouses of, like, don't start trouble count, but are there any less obvious things that maybe we should consider to avoid losing your favour? For this negotiation, perhaps not. If we go down to the city proper, I will brief you. Nod. Then let's get this over with. Uh, yeah, at which point the Supreme Witch sort of... Um, uh, she takes a step forwards, but um, you... Uh, as... Uh, as you are all sort of, like, aware... Um, the three of them sort of form this um, loose defensive formation, but they, when, when she takes a step forward to begin talking to you, she doesn't move out of formation. Um, there is an obvious tension in this room that doesn't ne doesn't need an insight check to um, to determine. Um, but she says, "So, where exactly should we begin?" Well, that is an excellent question. Because we are, well, I'm not going to lie, we we are not entirely sure what to expect from, well, this. She nods and sort of says, that's to be expected. I have 
let me lay out precisely what it is that I expect to get out of this. I won't pretend. We need your help. My plan is to convince you that your fight is not with us. And perhaps when that is determined, you will see things as I see them. And we can talk about the artifact. I feel like that seems like a solid order of, uh, well, of business. Very well. I guess at this point you also look, Grimo looked at it carefully step outside of the circle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then I assume the issues regarding the Dread Legion are up for discussion. At the right time. Oh. Would you prefer to do this seated or standing? Mm. I think we'd prefer to stand for now, or we're fine standing. Very well. Uh, at this point, uh, Zoon just says, I'm going to sit. Grabs a chair and just leans up against it. And you, like, as he sits up, sits up against this chair, you hear the wood creak and crunch a little under the weight of his plate armor. Yeah. Oh. Um, though, mayhap sitting would ease tensions. <laughs> well, Ari's not going to sit down, so... <laughs> I think yeah. I think Lothari would lean over to Gersh. She's like, I would appreciate a seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. You go. You can Grandma. go sit. I'm not... I'm, like, you're not... Like, I'm not going to stop you from sitting. Yeah, there's, there's like, chairs, as you can see them, up yeah. by the, the desk. I sit next to Zoom. Okay. He he turns his good eye towards you, regards you, and then just looks back. Mm -hmm. I prone at him. <laughs> oh my god! God, why? <laughs> we uh, cannot prone at. This this is not how I expected to go, but sure. No, not, oh yeah. Um, and so I guess before I talk a lot, uh, let's take a brief break so I can get a drink. Okay. <laughs>